gentlemen, uh, today we'll be continue with stoichiometry and do the last couple parts. So this will be the entirety of stoichiometry uh, you have learned. Uh, so this will be the last new stuff to learn in this uh, section. Uh, then we'll move on to gas loss and thermochemistry uh, next week. Uh, but what we have to work on is, so we figured out how to find out how much of something was made. You get two amounts of ingredients. We figured out how to find out how much product was made, which reactant got used up, the limiting reactant, and which reactant there was extra of. Uh, what we have to find out now, or what we have to be able to find out is, if we have extra of one of the reactants, how much is left over? How much extra do we have? Uh, so that is uh, the last part of this. Uh, and then we'll also talk about percent yield, and percent yield is really simple. It's just a percentage. Uh, so we're going to talk about how much excess reagent is left after a reaction and uh, percent yield today. Uh, so by far the more complex of the two of these is how much excess reagent is left. And the steps I've outlined here are the same as the steps on your how-to worksheet, or the how-to sheet, excuse me, that I gave you. So you can use that uh, as you go through the problems, or you can use this. I'll throw these notes up uh, on Google Classroom and PowerSchool as well. Uh, so basically, after you do your two regular stoichiometry problems, you figure out what the limiting reagent is and what your product will be, how much your theoretical yield is, how much you'll make. Uh, what you want to find out is, okay, I made 100 grams of copper. That'll be our first example. If I made 100, gra or 100 grams of copper sulfide, me. if I made 100 grams of copper sulfide and I used up all the copper, how much sulfur is left? How much sulfur did I use and how much is left? So we actually have to figure out how much we use. Uh, so that's going to be a third stoichiometry problem. So if it asks you how much reagent is left, uh, you have to do three stoichiometry problems in total. Uh, the two that we did last week to determine, or last, excuse me, yesterday, to determine limiting and excess reagent, as well as a third one. And this third one is going to convert from the amount we made, our theoretical yield, back to excess reagent. It's basically going to say, okay, I made 100 grams of product. How much of this excess reagent did I use? Uh, if I know how much I used and I know how much I started with, then it's a simple subtraction problem to find out how much we have left over, uh, which is always all number th step three is. So step three is just to subtract uh, the amount that we used, which is what we find in step two, from the amount we began with. So it's one more stoichiometry problem, one more stoichiometry conversion, and then a subtraction problem to find out how much excess remains. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a couple examples of that using the uh, same problems we did in my last video. So I'm going to add this step to those problems. Uh, and then uh, I will do some percentage yield stuff as well after that. So the first problem uh, I did uh, when we started talking about uh, limiting an excess reagent was 80 grams of copper and 25 grams of sulfur, uh, making copper one sulfide. Uh, so this is the first problem from the last video. And we found out that with 80 grams of copper and 25 grams of sulfur, we make 100 grams of copper one sulfide. And all the copper is used up. The copper is the limiting reagent. So the sulfur is the excess reagent. So we don't use up all the sulfur. What happens is we make 100 grams of copper one sulfide. All the copper is gone. There's still some sulfur left, but it has nothing to react with. So it just sits there. Uh, and we want to know how much we have left. If we want to know that, we have to find out is how much we used. Because we know how much we started with, 25 grams. So we got to find out how much we used. Uh, so starting with step two uh, of what I put on the previous page. So step two here, because I did one into step step one was just do the regular stoichiometry problems. Those are we're starting with those done. So starting at step two, what I want to do is say, okay, I made 100 uh, grams copper one sulfide, and I want to convert that into so. 100 grams Cu2S, and I want to convert that into grams of sulfur. And I have to go through all the steps, grams to moles, moles to moles of the other chemical, and moles back to grams. But I want to convert back to grams of sulfur to find out how much sulfur I used to make those 100 grams of copper 1 sulfide. Uh, so it's not a different type of stoichiometry problem. It's just you have to know where to start, what you have to start with the conversion, and what you're trying to convert to. Uh, so I'm going to set up this conversion, uh, and then I'll set it up and come back and talk about it. 
Okay. So I've set up the stoichiometry problem going from grams of copper one sulfide back to grams of sulfur. So in our original problem from Monday, we talked about how we would make actually make 100 grams of copper one sulfide. And what I'm think what I'm trying to figure out now is I'm starting with that 100 grams and seeing how much sulfur went into it, how much sulfur we had to make we we had to use to make it. And it turns out, so we do the grams to grams conversion. Uh, be careful with the moles. Remember, you get those coefficients from the balance equation. It's the same equation. You don't change that. Uh, they're both one in this case. Um, we, it turns out we use 20 grams of sulfur to make 100 grams of copper one sulfide. So if 20 grams of sulfur was used, that's not your answer to the question. The question asks how much is left. Well, now we know that 20 grams was used, and we started with 25 grams. So if we started with 25 grams, and we use 20 grams, that's going to equal 5 grams sulfur. So 5 grams of sulfur is left. I realize now that my 5 and my S look kind of similar, but it's 5 grams of sulfur. You can probably handle that. So we have 5 grams of sulfur left. So this extra stoichiometry problem told us how much we used, and then it's just a subtraction problem, because you're always going to know how much you started with. That's part of the question. Uh, if we didn't know how much we started with, we couldn't do this. Uh, so it's taking what we already did and adding one more uh, stoichiometry problem and a, and a subtraction step. So I'm going to go through one more example of this, again, from one of the ones we did yesterday, or sorry, one of the ones we did Monday, uh, and then I will go on to percent composition. Uh, so after today, you will be able to do both the green or the red problems in your homework for this week and the ones that are in green. So uh, we did a reaction with hydrogen and nitrogen uh, to make ammonia. Uh, and we're going to... Okay, so we have this Haber process for producing ammonia. And we start with 12 grams of hydrogen gas and 64 grams of nitrogen gas. And we found out, or we figured out, that we can make 68 grams of ammonia. Uh, and, use, and making that 68 grams of ammonia, that takes all of the hydrogen. The hydrogen is what gets used up. It's the limiting reagent. It does not take all of the nitrogen. There's going to be some nitrogen left over. So if we want to know how much is left over, again, we're going to go through those same steps. I'm going to set up a stoichiometry problem going from our theoretical yield, which is 68 grams of ammonia, and then I'm going to figure out, based on our chemical equation, how many grams of nitrogen that took. Uh, so again, it's grams to moles, uh, moles of one chemical, in this case moles of ammonia, to moles of nitrogen, and then uh, moles to grams. Yes, you could do this with liters. And you could do it with particles as well. Uh, but because we're in kind of a rough situation this year, we're just going to stick with grams. So everything's going to be in grams from for limiting an excess reagent. So it'll be grams of moles, moles of one chemical to moles of another chemical, and then back to grams. So I'm going to set up that stoichiometry problem and, again, uh, come back with results and discuss. Okay, so I've done the two remaining steps. Uh, quickly converted from grams of ammonia into grams of nitrogen gas. Uh, again, the only thing to be particularly careful of is make sure you use the coefficients from the balance equation. It's the same balance equation as for the other, uh, the other problems you did, the other limiting and excess reagent problem you did, the first two. Uh, you're all using the same balance equation for this. Uh, and one of the nice things, I guess, about doing a third stoichiometry problem uh, other than the general excitement of getting to do three stoichiometry problems, is by this point, you pretty much know all of the molar masses. Like, I didn't have to look up or figure out that NH3 is 17.04. I already knew that from up here. And nitrogen being 28.02, again, I had already done that up here uh, in my previous questions or my previous stoichiometry conversion. So you don't have to look those up anymore. You just plug them in. Uh, 
put out your conversion uh, and you find that if you made 68 grams of ammonia, you used 56 grams of nitrogen gas. And I'm rounding to sig figs. I'm not going to kill you on rounding, but that's what I'm doing, just so you know. So 56 grams of nitrogen gas used. Uh, and if we use 56 grams of nitrogen gas and we started with 64 grams, what we'll have left is 8. 8 grams left. Uh, so that would be your answer. So it's a stoichiometry problem followed by a subtraction problem. I have one more example up here uh, with the combustion of propene, C3H6. And I'm going to do the problem, but I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to leave it up here, and you can look at it on the note, notes PDF or on the video if you want. But it's the same process. Okay, so I did the same sec steps and solved this problem as well, looking for how much of the excess reagent, the propene in this case, is left. I'm not going to go over all the steps, uh, but they're laid out here. And again, I'll put this notes, uh, the board notes up as a PDF so you can look at it there. Or you can just pause the video, I suppose. Okay. So the other thing I'm going to talk about today is percent yield. And it's a pretty simple concept. When we do the math for stoichiometry, we calculate theoretical yield. Uh, so, again, when we do all this math, like, for this problem, we said, theoretically, uh, we should get 217 grams of carbon dioxide out of this reaction. That was our theoretical yield. It's a theoretical yield because we just calculated it using math. We didn't actually run the reaction and get, in this case, 217 grams. Uh, we're just saying that's what you should get if everything goes perfectly. If every, in this case, if every molecule of C3H6 reacts with every molecule of oxygen, you will get uh, 217 grams of CO2. Uh, but reactions rarely are 100% efficient. Uh, Reactions depend on chemicals randomly running into each other. That's literally how they work. Uh, you put two chemicals near each other, and because all matter is moving, as long as it's not at absolute zero, uh, they'll run into each other, and if they hit each other with enough energy, they react. Well, sometimes, just by random chance, a couple of the atoms or molecules don't find each other and don't react. Uh, there are also other reasons reactions don't go to 100% yield, uh, including the fact that... Uh, when you carry reactants or products or when you do something like purifications, a lot of times uh, you'll leave some behind. Uh, or, for instance, you may have a slightly impure reactant, uh, which could cause a slightly lower than expected percent yield. Uh, bottom line is very few reactions are anywhere, uh, well, some are near 100% efficient, but very few reactions are, in fact, 100% efficient. There's usually some amount in real life uh, that doesn't take place. So theoretical yield is, again, the amount you calculate uh, should be made using stoichiometry. So that's the stuff for Monday, calculate theoretical yield. That's how much should be made. In real life, you'll get an actual yield if you actually run the reaction. Uh, so you go in the lab and you react propene and oxygen, and you would get something less than 217 grams of CO2. Uh, so if you reacted 82.4 grams of propene with 237 grams of oxygen, you'd expect to get those 217 grams of CO2. Uh, but maybe you only get, I don't know, 210 grams of CO2. Uh, so I'm going to skip ahead to that problem. So maybe you only get 210 grams of CO2. So in a lab test, This reaction produced 210 grams of CO2. So it almost produced what you'd expect, but a little lower. And again, there's a lot of reasons for that, and we're not going to go into too much detail. Uh, it covers in the PowerPoint a couple reasons reactions don't go to 100% in the PowerPoint for this section. Uh, but basically, for now, just be contented to know they don't always go to 100%. Well, the amount in the lab, the amount you actually get when you actually run the reaction in the lab is shockingly called your actual yield. So again, theoretical yields from the math, actual yield is from actually doing the reaction and measuring the products, you know, measuring, 
uh, purifying and measuring the products. Uh, so to figure out percent yield, it's pretty simple. Uh, percent yield is just actual yield divided by theoretical and then times 100% uh, just to make it a percentage. So that's just taking a decimal and making it a percent. Uh, not very hard to do. Essentially, again, your theoretical yield is if everything goes perfectly. It's the most you could possibly get. In real life, we rarely get that. Uh, so we get a lower percentage than that. Uh, and in this case, again, fairly simple to calculate. Uh, 210 grams CO2 divided by 217 grams of CO2 equals, and I'm going to do the times 100 just like in my head. I'm not going to show that step, but you guys can, in fact, move the decimal place two points over, I assume, without needing too much help. So 210 divided by 217 equals 0.97, which would turn into 97%. Uh, so that's your yield, 97%. You got nearly what you were expecting, but not quite. Uh, so 97%. 97% is a high yield. Uh, a lot more common you'll see stuff in the 80s or even lower. Uh, but it's just the amount you expected to get based on the math is your theoretical yield. The amount you actually get in the lab is your actual yield. Take the actual yield, divide it by theoretical yield, that's percent yield. That's all it is. Uh, you will always be given actual yield in the question. That's not something you can come up with or figure out. Uh, if we were still doing labs, if we were still at school, you would actually have to figure out actual yield in the lab by running a reaction and measuring your yield. Uh, but that's different than, uh, you know, figuring out mathematically. So the only thing you can figure out mathematically is a theoretical yield. Uh, actual yield will be given to you in the question uh, since, you know, you won't have the opportunity to actually run reactions in the lab. Uh, so I'll do another one here. Uh, this is the hydrogen and nitrogen making ammonia. Uh, what if... In the lab, this reaction produced, let's say, 52 grams of ammonia. Again, it's theoretical, or excuse me, actual divided by theoretical, and yes, times 100%. Uh, to make it a percent, and in this case, you'd get 52 grams NH3 divided by how much we would expect to get, uh, which we figured out on Monday was 68 grams. Uh, and that'll equal 0 0.76 or 76%. So in this case, you would have 76% yield. Uh, so that'd be your percent of yield. Uh, and that's really all there is to that. So percentage yield, very easy. Uh, how much excess region is left is a little more complicated. Again, though, you have that how-to sheet and you have the first page uh, of these notes, which also is the how-to steps. Uh, so you should be able to follow those steps. Uh, follow them carefully, you'll end up where you need to go. These are all just the same stoichiometry conversions. It's just you have to know where to start and where you want to go to. Uh, so that's really what you have to keep keep track of. It's all the same sort of grams to moles, moles of one chemical to moles of another chemical, uh, and then moles of the last chemical back to grams. Uh, same sort of thing. You just have to know where you start and where you end up with, uh, what you want to end up with. Okay. Have a good day, gentlemen. Good luck on the homework. Now, you should be able to do all of that worksheet uh, the worksheet, uh, the limiting and excess reagent worksheet is due Friday. Uh, the demonstration that from the lab worksheet from the video, that's due Thursday. Have a good day.